People have often asked me if I'm living my dream as a chef. As a child, I used to work, well, I didn't used to work, well, I, otherwise it would have been child labour. I used to help my mom out in the kitchen a lot. She loves to cook, she loves to bake, so she would allow us kids to you know, help her cut, clean, fry, bake. And uh, I remember when I was eight, I wanted to eat some hard-boiled eggs. And my mom's always said, you know, she's taught me, put the water into the pot, put the eggs in, turn on the fire, let it boil, and wait for a few minutes, and then you can have your eggs. And I remember thinking, why? Why do I have to put the water in? Let's not put the water in. So I put the eggs into the pot and I turn on the fire. Well, needless to say, it exploded. <laughs> the kitchen smelled like of, of smoke for the next couple of days, maybe a week. My mom would never have guessed then what I was going to be today. <laughs> so what brought me to doing what I'm doing? The first thing that came to my mind was the love, my love for food. Um, even I did not imagine I was going to be doing what I was doing for obvious reasons. I did a slight detour in, in, in my career. A brief background of what I used to do. Um, after A-levels, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went to join Singapore Airlines as a flight attendant. I flew for a couple of years and then one day, my brother-in-law, yes, my brother-in-law, who is a great man, to, for me, to me. He said, all right, she deserves a good education. Send her overseas. And then my sister said, hey, my husband wants to send you overseas. So uh, let me have a think. Are you crazy? Okay, I'm crazy. All right. So I quit. I packed up my bag and I was in England, like literally two weeks after that. I mean, I did apply for a, 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 a space, you know, a university prior to that. So off I went to university, I did business information technology. I hated it. I hated it so much, I struggled to get my honours. And I remember in my final year, a good friend that I met said to me, after the exam, she goes, Gwen, you're really not cut out to do this. Get another degree. I said, damn, okay, let's try and get into another one. So I went on to do my master's in logistics, trade and finance. I actually really enjoyed trade, finance. I finished, I met my husband in London. Then just before I finished, I said to him, all right, let's move back to Asia. He was working then, he goes, huh? I was like, yeah, we're going back to Asia. So he quit his job, or I made him quit his job. He, we packed up, we flew back, not to Singapore, we went to Hong Kong. When I was in Hong Kong, I was trying to find a job in the finance industry. He's already been in finance for a while. It wasn't a good year. It was the year of the 9-11. Uh, obviously, you know, interviews after interviews didn't work out for me. And then one day, maybe a, a year later, I said, all right, that's enough. I've had enough. I packed up my bag and he goes, where are you going? I'm going to China. So there I went. I went off to China. And he, it, I know, I mean, and looking back, I was pretty unbelievable. He should not have married me. But anyway, so, so off I went to China. Uh, I found a job in the logistics industry. Um, this was in 2001. It was a great time. It was very difficult working in the logistics industry as a female, trying to pick up the language um, and handling, for whatever reason, they put me as accounts, direct, uh, accounts manager and I was handling 200 people under me. Um, and I had to prove that I could do it. So I remember people, the guys under, directly under me, seven, seven of them, they were way more qualified than me. They were Chinese and they couldn't believe, what was this Chinese girl coming in here? And she doesn't even you know, seem to be one of us. Why, why am I reporting to her? So they didn't help me. So what did I do? I, pound, I had to pound the, the airport terminal every day, you know, the warehouse, understanding the freight. All right, so there we went. Six months later, I remember the CEO came, coming up to me saying, good job. Then my director came up to me, hey, I need a successor. I said, okay, I've only been in this job for six months. 
well, I need a successor so that I can move on. All right, all right then, so be it. Nine months later, just before I was promoted to the Accounts Director for Asia Pacific, I said, I'm done. And my husband said, what? You have not got the title yet? I went, I've got it, it's there. All right, I quit. So I quit. So I guess what I'm saying, complacency doesn't really agree with me. Every time I come to a point where, oh, I've got it, I'm getting too complacent, I have to move on. So then what did I do? I thought, yeah, if I can do that, if I can you know, do, you know, make the millions for the company, I can do this, start my own. So I went on my first job. My first company I started was called Concubine. Yes, it was you know, soft finishings. Um, we did like table runners, cushions, etc. You know, ashtrays, saws manufactured in, in, in China. Uh, it seemed like a great idea then. Well, it didn't sell very well. So I wrapped that up painfully after a year and thought, oh dear, what a failure. Someone came along and said, hey, I've got another great idea. Why don't we do this? Laptop sleeves. I said, okay, let's do it. So there we went. Before it even got off, I said to him, you know, I think we should just cut our losses. Because at that point, I was thinking, I cannot go through another year. It's not because, you know, I wasn't willing to try. But you come to the point where you go, it's time to say, yeah, I failed again. So I went on to go to be a money broker in Hong Kong and Singapore. It was great. I should have been a money broker right from the beginning, according to a lot of my friends. But I was also at the age where, you know, having to take my customers out, drinking till seven in the morning, just didn't sit very well with me. And then sometimes they're a bit of an idiot. I said, you don't understand the curve? Okay, so this is what, what my husband, who's a trader, says to me. Don't tell them that. So, once again, I quit. <laughs> so I quit. And then, um, I had some health issues in 2008, so I took a year out. Um, in 2009, I was wondering, what do I want to do? You know, life is too short. And I said, let's, let's try to do some cooking. So I went off to Paris to learn how to bake. A week later, I called my husband. I said, I'm in love. <laughs> he was very relieved when he found out it was, I was in love with the pastries and not with a French man. <laughs> so anyway, so for the next two years, I went you know, back and forth to France to, to finish up my courses. Uh, I worked there. Um, I came back in 2011 and I wanted to work in a local industry, in a local kitchen. Um, just to have a feel of how people, you know, how, how the production kitchen in Singapore uh, operates. I did it for two, week, two months, I know, short. So I remember meeting the French pastry chef, Christophe, and he goes, what do you want to do? Well, eventually I want to open my own patisserie, my own cafe. He goes, well, then you should be out in the hotels working three to five years. I went, dude, I'm 38. I don't have three to five years. And he looked at me, he goes, fine, go out there, pick any, any place that you want to, any tables, anything you want to learn, let me know if you have any questions. So I did it for three weeks. Oh, actually, I only worked for one month in the local kitchen. So that was a month. Right after that, I started selling from home. And uh, very shortly after, I said, I'm ready to start. So I started Patisserie G in 2012, November. Um, it was, it was a whirlwind from there. In 2012, November, I started Patisserie G. We started from five people. In 2013, eight months later, I started a bakery with a French, actually with the same French chef that said, why don't you go out there and work three to five years? We started a bakery together, uh, doing artisanal breads. Last year was a pretty crazy year for me. I expanded Patisserie G in Millennial Walk. We were 800 square feet. We doubled to 1,600 square feet. Um, in the same year, we had to move the bakery to a food factory from 800 square feet to 4,400 square feet. From when we first started in 2012, we had five people. Now we're over 30 people. 
Um, so I guess I want to share with you lessons that I have learned while I was, you know, running my own business. I think the path to having a successful business is not just one big blind leap, but a series of little steps or little bets. Like I said, Pedestrian G was not my first company. It was my fourth. Along the way, there were businesses that I've thought about, you know, but never quite took off or never, never started. My first two businesses started small, didn't succeed, but I learned a lot about how to manage partnership, manufacturing, suppliers, sales, you know, ideals. Um, so when I did this, when I started Persidry G, I believe I was taking small bets, small steps, limiting my risk. I think the second thing I wanted that I learned were from my mistakes. You know, a lot of people don't learn from mistakes. I hope I'm one of them that have learned from my mistakes. Some people look back and regret. Oh, I wish I did that. I wish I did not. For me, every time I look back at my mistakes, I try to remember why and to learn from it. Because if you're always looking back and regretting, you're never going to look in front of you and see what's out there. You might trip, you know. So don't, don't regret, you know. Like, I've got so many failed businesses or businesses that haven't taken off. And also, every new venture has, has risk. Okay? As we gain experience, we learn to mitigate the risk more and more. This applies even when we're not starting our own business, but you know, in the day-to-day -day running of the businesses. New marketing, um, ideas, new products, new hires, new processes. And the, la the last message for me, or the last lesson I've learned, before I started, um, I remember my, my father-in-law is, is a very old and wise uh, businessman. He is very well respected, he's 82, and he said this to me, when you have your own business, there's one thing you have to remember, you have to be fair, you have to grow your businesses, you have to grow your employees, you have to treat them, you have to grow them like you, how you want to grow the businesses. I think that's one of the things that I firmly believe in. Um, I must say that E2I has really helped us uh, come to this point. Uh, through the subsidies of the machineries, equipment, helping us grow, you know, allowing us to send people for courses. Um, so, you know, it's not an advertisement, but it's true. The ESO has really helped. <laughs> um, yeah, so my father-in-law said, you know, um, it is very important to grow your employees. And in a way, I... I, I look very, very importantly at how to grow the, uh, our employees when we, when we see someone who actually has the hunger we will try to groom them okay, so there's another example when we hired this, 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 this customer used to be a customer she, well, she used to come for six months every time she came she would eat a cake have a coffee and then one day she said, when she saw me, she said, Gwen, can I speak to you? I said, sure. I said, oh, I'm a big fan of your, of your cakes and et cetera. Do you think I can come and work in your kitchen? I said, really? Yeah, it's hard work. I said, yeah, I'm, I, can, I can deal with hard work. I said, what experience have you got? Nothing. Okay, if you think you can, well, we'll give you a shot. So she worked from six months, for about nine months actually, nine months. My chef, I think my chef was almost about to kill himself. He goes, why is it she doesn't understand? I said, because she's a blank piece of paper. But I've told her twice. Well, tell her another two more times. But he never gave up because she had a good attitude. So we kept going and going and going. Nine months later, she said, Gwen, I'm so sorry. You know, I hate it when, when employees come to me and say, boss, Gwen, can I speak to you? In my mind, it will be, they're going to quit, they're going to borrow money, or if it's a, if it's a woman and she's, 
pregnant and she's and she's got a husband i'll go she's pregnant you know i haven't been that wrong i remember my china girl coming to me and straight away i looked at her yo they said mm-hmm. so that's all i could say right what else can you say um so anyway to answer the question of am i living living my dream it wasn't a dream from young i stumbled on an interest i fell in love with it i pursued it and now being able to make a living out of it is icing on the cake for me i found what i love to do and although goals are good as they help you to focus i think for me the journey is the most important i believe i believe in living in the present doing the best i can today and taking time to smell the rose flavored macarons I was conventional in many ways and yet not. I went to university, worked in the corporate world, and then I became a cook, as my mom would call it. She said, if this had been what I wanted to do, I should not have wasted all those years studying. My answer was, if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have known. I think one cannot be afraid of hard work when you start your own business. And the road can be quite lonely, I'm sure, Dennis have said. There will always be people around you encouraging and there will also be people who are going to you know criticize i think it's important to take their criticisms constructively and their negativity as a reminder of why you need to make this work there is still a long way to go before my business can be considered as successful by conventional terms we are still a very tiny little cafe but as i said earlier i'm start i realized every day that i can keep doing this what I love is a successful day for me, and I'm lucky enough to keep doing it for the rest of my life. It would be a successful life for me. Um, so thank you for listening. Good luck with your ventures.